Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Lee Knoll, who's the managing partner of Knoll & Company, your next generation CPA firm. Lee, welcome back to the program. Hi, Mike. Hey, I know today we want to talk about a really important topic called business structure, and I think we could probably talk for nine and a half hours straight on this one thing. So let's hit the highlights of this, but I know this is so important because when a business comes to you and says, let's start a business or let's expand a business or let's look at you know, some of the, the key points of am I set up the right way, business structure really is the first place to look. So first of all, let's um, define what is business structure. Um, bi business structure is the en any type of entity that you de decide to operate on, um, with, um, whether it's a corporation, um, LLC partnership, um, or just a sole proprietorship. Okay. So the structure. So are you just, uh, you know, uh, selling your wares and you're not really set up and you you didn't go to the secretary of state? Well, that's not right. But, you know, what do you choose? You know, and let's start at the beginning. I would assume that you start as, you know, if you're a smaller business, you start as a sole proprietorship, right? Um, Not not necessarily now. Um, um, You can actually start as a single member LLC. Okay. And um, that's probably the and again, if you start as a single member LLC, it's for tax per or it's um it's just it's like a sole proprietorship. Um, so you don't have to be a sole proprietorship to start an LLC. It's if you have a name you want to operate on, because if you have a name, you have to register the name with the Secretary of State anyway. Okay. Do doing business as name, so you, you might as well do an LLC. Um, so then, uh, be, you heard my uh, misunderstanding of the assumption of oh, you started a sole prop. So when is the time that someone would think of well, all I need is a sole proprietorship? If it's really just a uh, really really small business and they're not really they're not really doing it for much profit at all and not really trying to make it a business per se and then when they start you know kind of get that proof of concept and they're starting to you know get clients and sell you know products and services and they then go into that LLC at that point what are the benefits to the business owner because i know that as a sole proprietorship there's some maybe some limitations but then there's some protections as an LLC right yeah the the, the big big thing you get with an LLC is um i i believe there's some um liability protection is basically the big thing you get with an LLC um so if you, and again that with that, any type of entity you, you generally get um some sort sort of liability protection um whether it, with a sole proprietorship it's like you're one in the same it's yourself right. if you're a sole proprietor. So there's no liability protection there. It's just you. So what's an example of, of how that would provide that liability protection? So what does that look like? Um well, it just makes it harder for, I guess, um, I'm not real sure on that. The, the thing thing I had heard in and you as a CPA would know this better, but I had heard like if you are in business doing a bad business deal and something comes against you, you as a sole prop, they can come after your house or your personal accounts. But as an LLC, there's going to provide that protection to go, oh, no, that's his personal. Um, you can only get the stuff that's in the business. Yeah, yeah, that that is true. Um they as 
with an LLC, they, in theory, can't come out. Now, I think the, I think the slight problem is if you're the only one doing the work, they can still come after you personally. And just like anything, we say, um, it, it's not. There's never one answer to everything. And just like you just said, they're like, okay, yeah, there is that protection, but if you're the only one, there's always conditions. So you never can hear one thing and go, oh, well, I'm safe because. So you always have to keep that those kind of things in mind. So good uh, distinction there between sole prop and LLC. What then, uh, as the company grows, or what then should people be considering regarding the LLC at, from a tax? Uh, uh, um, uh, perspective, because one thing that I have heard of is having your company set up as an LLC, but then taxed as a different entity to give you um, some benefits that way. Yeah, you, you you can be an LLC when you start when you're small. You can be a one person LLC if it's just yourself, and then um, down the road when you start making money um generally i i i recommend um once you make net profit of around 50,000 plus you can then elect to be taxed as an s corp um or an, or a s corporation for tax purposes not changing the entity you're just still an llc for state state um reasons but for tax purposes you're an s corp now yeah. And all all that basically the big difference is you don't have to you don't pay Social Security and Medicare tax on 100 percent of your earnings. Then you can take smaller you can take some of your money out in distributions and some out in salary, some of the earnings. So you're not paying Social Security tax on all the earnings of the LLC. Because the word comes to my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like being double taxed. Is there an aspect of doing it that way that prevents being taxed twice on the same thing or paying taxes twice on the same thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, with, with an LLC, yeah. E either one of those, you don't get taxed twice on either one of the. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no double tax on that. So then as the business grows, should it be, you know, I've heard of like the C corporation, at what point should you consider changing from a LLC to an S corp to a C corp? Are there some things to kind of uh, milestones to keep in mind there, or is a C corp just for, you know, the mega large businesses? A C corp, um, a C corp um, really is, um, not necessarily just for the mega businesses, but they're very, they're, there's not very many of those anymore. And the big difference is between the S Corp and the C Corp is um, with the C Corp, you can, um, the fringe benefits, you can, for example, the officers can, you can cover 100% of the health insurance on the officer uh, on the C Corp. And it, you can have a medical reimbursement plan. You can have all basically a lot of the benefits inside the C Corp that you can't in the S Corp. Um, that's probably the big difference um, is the medical stuff. But, um, but the, and the other difference is then the only way to get money out of a C Corp is to pay yourself salary. And that's where where the double taxation comes in because the C corp pays tax and then you pay tax on whatever you take out. So the C corp oh. does does pay double tax. You can get paid. You can pay double tax with the C corp. And okay. that's really why there's not that many C corps anymore. Once they came out with the S corps. So probably this day and age, none of the newer small businesses ever set up a C Corp unless they really have a, want to do the medical reimbursement plan. And then yep. gen and again, none of them, if they have employees, they 
most times don't want to set that up either. And so, yeah, so most of them are not set up, don't want to do that. Interesting. Um, and, and I, and I know I say this, uh, a, a lot of times, but it really bears repeating. There is never one solution to every single person that is set up because it all, everything, everyone is different. And so should you be a LLC tax as, or should you be a plain LLC or C Corp? All of these things are some, something that you need to talk with your CPA about and say, here's my needs. Here's what I want to be doing. And then the CPA asks questions and says, here is the the right structure. What are some of the mistakes that you see people making typically before they come to you? And then what are you doing to remedy those? Well, the, the mistakes that I see is they they come to us after the fact that they've already done something. They've either set up a LLC and they thought they filed to be taxed as an S corp when in fact they never sent in the paperwork for the S corp, but they come, uh, they come after the end of the year tax after the taxes are due or um, they're behind and instead of, so they don't seek professional help at the start. Um, they should yes. always, whenever you're starting a business, you should, that the first thing you should do is go see the professionals and get figure it out before you start, not after you start. <laughs> so you're saying um, people should not just pl- plow ahead and think they're right and assume and sprint ahead. They should actually take a pause, think, get some advice, get a multitude of counselors, and then move ahead. That that sounds uh, really like wonderful advice, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they should do. But yeah, a lot of times they just start plowing ahead and then, then they've either done it wrong or they don't quite understand. They, their friend told them to do it this way, which wasn't quite right or yeah. That's but, that's a big their friend or Google. Yeah, or or the big one that's the big one that's happening right now is YouTube videos is um there's a bunch of YouTube tax advice and um LLC um setup advice. Uh-huh. And and so basically YouTube has a lot of videos saying everyone should set up LLC. It will save you taxes. Well, you got to spend money to save on taxes. Yeah. And, you- <laughs> and, and I would suspect there's something else that people need to rec- recognize. It's not just quote unquote, setting up an LLC. It's setting it up the right way. Correct. And too many times people hear something online or Google or social media and they go, oh, to save money on taxes, I need to set up. And so I'm going to go click, click, click. And then something in the process or something in the setup could have been done differently, better, more efficiently, or was actually done wrong. And then now they're they're not doing things the right way. Exactly right. Yeah. So trust, having someone that that you know you can trust is just critical. I think that is really, really powerful to, to keep in mind. So with business structure, you want to do it upfront and do it the right way with the right advice. Well, Lee, what if someone um, uh, uh, sets up their structure? Should there be a time where, it, you know, five years down the road, there there could be a, a change to the structure that would benefit them? What should they be watching for to ask their CPA, should I make a change? Or is it once you've set it up the right way, then you don't you can forget about it? How does that work? Um, yeah, yeah, you can always you can always change the structure down the road if it if you need to. Um, and in some cases, that does happen if you, if the business is really successful and um, and you're getting ready to either sell the business or um, do some sort of merger, you can whatever the case or bring on partners or there's our 
there are different reasons that you may want to structure the business different um, than than it is currently. Like, um, like the big one is generally. Generally, I don't recommend S S corps for um, unrelated um, individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, just because with an S corp, you got to keep everything equal, and people have trouble keeping all the distributions equal. Um, so I don't generally recommend an S corp for um, unrelated um, individuals. But there's ways there's there's ways to get around that. Um, like you can have a, for example, you can have an um, an S corp own the own the LLC. So you you may have three S corps own a LLC. Um, so that that's one way to. So the main LLC is the business operate operating unit whereas the s corps are um the individuals that actually own the llc but the yeah. their s corps own it so there's ways around it so that there yeah down the road yeah you may want to change the structure a little um depending on the circumstances yeah so uh, again it you don't blindly set it and forget it. You get qualified help. You see what you need to accomplish and pick the right uh, um, structure. And then once in a while, verify and make sure that you're still in the right structure for what you need. Yeah. You, yeah. You always need to ver- yeah, verify. You just don't keep going and plugging along. You need to just make sure everything's going, going good. And, Double check in, see on whether it's your business structure or your accounting or whatever it is. You need to be looking at it every year. See if you're still in the correct spot. 100%. Very good. Well, Lee, this has been really, really helpful for understanding setting up business structure the right way and some tips to consider. If someone is interested in uh, double checking their structure or setting up their business the right way, what's the best way they can learn more and then also reach out and connect with you? Well, they can connect with us. Um, they can find us uh, on the web at nullcpa.com or they can reach us by phone 303-238-9673 or by email nullcpa at nullcpa.com. Excellent. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming on the show again today. It's been a real pleasure talking with you again. Appreciate it, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.